Living in Alaska can be expensive, as I'm sure you've probably figured out in your research if you're considering moving to Alaska. And one of the biggest things that really deters people from moving up here is the the fear about the increased cost of living. And so I'm sure a lot of people are thinking, how in the world do people afford to live in Alaska who are just normal people? They're not millionaires. You know, they don't have their own private yacht or plane or anything like that. And how can they afford to live here when the cost of living looks like it's so high on paper. Well, today we're going to be talking about why that is exactly and some of the cost-saving things you can do that's uh, that's going to help you to save money. Before we get started, though, my name is Jamin Gurker. I'm a local real estate associate broker here in the state of Alaska and South Central, and my mission, as always, is to help you to build an intentional and significant legacy for yourself and your family by coaching in real estate and we're going to be talking about all things budget today and how to save money. Before we get started, though, give this video a like, subscribe, do all the good stuff. Now let's jump into it. One of the biggest things you can do right off the bat is if you are purchasing a property in Alaska is do not tell the tax man how much you paid for it, okay? Alaska is a non-disclosure state, despite what some people are trying to make happen over in Juneau. But Alaska is a non-disclosure state, which means that as a homeowner, you do not have to tell the tax assessor how much you paid for the property. They can ask a couple of times, but you do not have to tell them. That's why I always tell people when you close on your house, you're going to get a, a letter in the mail that's going to say, hey, congratulations on the house. By the way, how much did you spend on it? And it's going to look really official and everything because it is, but you have the legal right to just throw that away. Okay. And that, that is a huge gift to homeowners here in the area because it's a higher meal rate than what you're going to find in most other areas. And the reason for that is they're assuming that they are not taxing your property at its full value. If they get you at the higher meal rate and they get you at the, the higher value that you paid for the property, it starts to, to make you hurt pretty quickly um, as far as property taxes go. So yes, make sure that you are exercising your rights under the law and you do not disclose how much you actually paid for the house for the tax to the tax assessor. Now for this next one, um, this is actually kind of the secret for a lot of people who live here in the area, and that is they live in the Matsu Valley where the, the cost of housing and a lot of other amenities are going to be cheaper, and they work over in Anchorage, which means that they get the higher, higher wages and earnings and all that over in Anchorage. And this is um, kind of a good compromise and a good strategy that's worked for a lot of people. The downside, of course, being that you're going to have to commute probably 30, 40, 50 minutes a day one way to get to Anchorage and then drive back to the valley. And it's a compromise that a lot of people are willing to make. You have to make that decision for yourself if that's a big deal or not. For some people, that ain't no thing. For other people, it's definitely a thing. So you have to decide for yourself. I'm going to upset some of you with this one, but eat out as little as possible. In Alaska, cost of food is going to be higher than what it's going to be in most other parts of the lower 48 or you know, the, I guess the rest of the United States as well. And so for that reason, if you're trying to clean up your budget a little bit, make it a little bit more affordable for you to live here, then definitely do make sure that you're not eating out as frequently or you know, if you want to really maximize it, just don't eat out at all. You know, that's that's a good way to try to keep as much money in your pocket as possible. For those of you with Costco memberships, I know I'm preaching to the choir here, but make sure you buy in bulk as much as you possibly can, because usually you're going to get a lower unit price per unit when you are buying in bulk, which for the layperson, all that means is you are going to be paying less per item if you buy more of them all at the same time. So it uh, might not be as convenient storage wise to buy, we'll say like, a couple hundred pounds of rice, but it is cheaper than if you bought them at, you know, the single little um, one pound bags. So it'd be a nice little trick. And that's why a lot of people have Costco memberships when they move up here. Next big thing I would really offer as a, as a good idea for what you should be doing is make sure you buy your equipment and you buy your clothes off season. What I mean by that is, well, I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory. If you are buying snow gear in July, that's going to be a little bit more, a little cheaper just because all the stores are trying to just clear their inventory, get that stuff out of there. And if you're buying a, a snowblower in July, that's obviously going to be a little more affordable also. And for gear like, I don't know, wood splitter, stuff like that, maybe look for that around like the January, February kind of time frame. It might be a little bit cheaper. I'm not so sure about that one, but the principle remains the same. Just make sure that you are buying stuff 
off season so you can kind of offset some of the costs a bit because uh, the stores are just trying to move that inventory at that point. So it's getting in the way. Now, this next one is going to require you to be a little social, but that's okay. I know you can handle it. And that is to go and join a co-op. So for those of you who aren't aware, what a co-op is, is you get together with a group of people and you have the ability, once you pool your, your money together and everyone pays a certain share, to go and approach the um, whatever store distributor it is that you're talking to and see if you can get, again, some of the these bulk rates. And they have a lot of different co-ops for um, stuff like organic food. They have stuff for produce. And I'm sure they have a bunch of other co-ops out there for different food products as well. So if that's something that you're considering, um, I would recommend it. You can actually get a lot of produce or a lot of organic food and stuff like that at a pretty good rate just because you're buying it on bulk prices because you're able to get together with an entirely different group to help you do that. For my fishermen out there, this one's not going to be uh, too difficult for me to pitch to you, and that is go dip netting and actually eat the salmon that you catch. Now, in Alaska, once you've lived here for an entire calendar year, you have the ability to go and go dip netting where it's 25 salmon plus 10 for every member of your household. So if there are four of you, two kids, a wife, and a husband, you are looking at, oh, what is that? About 55 salmon that you can take home. That is a lot of salmon, and most people are never going to need that much. But if you're looking for a good source of protein that's very high quality and... Um, you know, that's not going to break the bank, but also going to be very healthy. That's going to be a great option. The only catch is you have to make sure that you are um, actually eating the salmon because a lot of people, they have the experience of catching it. That's fun. And they process it and they don't want to see any more salmon ever again. <laughs> and it just kind of sits in the freezer. So for that reason, yeah, I say catch the salmon and dip netting and then actually eat it. And that's really where the savings are going to be. Let's go ahead and take a break here real quick. For those of you who aren't aware, I do host a podcast for people who are moving up to Alaska or have recently moved to Alaska and talk about their experiences and everything that uh, that they think about Alaska so far and any tips and tricks they have for people who are looking at moving up in the near future themselves. So um, the name of that podcast is the Alaskan Journey Podcast. Link for that is going to be in the description section down below. And also, if you are looking at moving up here, I would recommend you get a copy of my relocation guide and how you acquire that is you go register to my website, link in the description section down below, by the way, and just in the little comment section, make sure you put relocation guide so I know what to send you. Now, let's go and finish up today's video. This one is not going to be very popular, but that's okay. And that is getting used to living in a colder house. For people who are used to living with uh, like 70 degrees or something like that inside, um, it's going to be a little expensive keeping a house that warm in Alaska during the, the cold winter months. So for that reason, you don't necessarily have to a full on like revenant experience where it's like, you know, 50 degrees or something like that inside the house. I actually would not recommend that for a number of reasons. Um, but you can keep it comfortably around 60, 65 or so, and that's going to start to become a lot more comfortable. As an um, alternative to that, you might actually look at getting some kind of a wood stove where you have the ability to burn some of the, the dead firewood that's around your property if you do find yourself in an area that does have dead firewood and that's readily available. If not, um, it's probably, you're probably not going to be saving a whole lot of money if you have to go buy like an entire cord of firewood to offset the price for gas and everything else. I will say wood stoves though are absolutely incredible because if the power goes out, you are not in the least bit concerned about property freezing or having any issues with frozen pipes. So, you know, that's another good reason but yeah, just uh, getting comfortable with the cold and putting on more layers can definitely save you a lot of money during some of those cold winter months where the gas bill does start to get a little high. During the summer months, you might really consider just cutting all streaming subscriptions that you have. And the reason for that is that's really going to give you a lot of motivation to get out and actually enjoy the state and everything that it has to offer because you're no longer distracted by Hulu, Netflix, uh, Disney Plus, whatever your subscription of choice is. And that's going to give you um, more incentive to get out there, but also it's going to save you a little bit of money too. Speaking of getting out during the summertime, 
keep your camping simple. Okay. You don't need like a, a giant mobile home or something like that. When you're, you're looking at going and doing some camping, um, a simple tent and, um, you know, water filter or something like that. And you'd be surprised just how much fun you can have going camping. So just keep your outdoor experiences as simple as possible. You don't have to uh, go and get all new gear for everything it is that you're every new adventure it is that you're setting out for. And um, that's really where those experiences can start getting expensive. So yep, make sure you set yourself up by, um, by not overspending on camping. All right, this next one is more for the guys, and that is making sure that your hobbies are not too expensive. Now, if you're in Alaska and you're talking about hobbies, you're usually looking at like four-wheeling or hunting or um, plane flying, plane flying, flying planes, whatever the uh, correct term is for that. But either way, it does get expensive, and anytime you're dealing with um, dealing with any kind of a hobby that has a motor involved – it's going to get very expensive very quickly. So just be very picky if you're trying to save money about which hobbies it is that you're getting into. And make sure you budget enough for the inevitable repairs that are going to go along with um, maintaining whatever equipment it is that you have, because I guarantee you it is not going to go according to plan and things are going to break down. Now, this one should kind of just be a gimme, but make sure you get good with coupons. And you can find a lot of these online these days, even um, without having to necessarily go through the newspaper. You can find a lot of these just on apps for whatever store it is that you're you're looking at, and that can save you um, save you a boatload. So get good with coupons. Now, last but not least, make sure that you start traveling off season to wherever it is that you're going. Inevitably, people are going to need to get out of Alaska for a little bit just because you do kind of feel like you're living in another country sometimes when you're here just because it is a little bit more isolated and it's more difficult to, uh, more difficult to get into and out of Alaska. But try to schedule as much of your activities around the off season as you possibly can, because if you're coming to Alaska during the summertime, that's going to be more expensive. If you are living in Alaska and let's say you like, uh, like going to like some small town to like recuperate and just kind of rest and do a little R and R, then you might want to try to schedule that to be off season because I'm telling you, uh, once the tourists get here, everything gets a lot more expensive. So try to travel off season as much as you possibly can. Well, those are my tips for you on how to best save money as you're living in Alaska and how it is that kind of the the normal run-of-the-mill people actually afford to live up here. I sure hope it's been useful. If you have any other tips, do make sure you post those in the comments section down below. And um, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. (music) 